In this video, we're going to be talking about privacy and security related to your no-code app, specifically with Bubble.io, the Bubble app development platform. Is your Bubble app secure or can you build a secure app on Bubble? Now, make sure you stick around until the end because we're going to talk about this in two segments or two phases. Number one, the things that you don't really have control over, but that you still need to know about when it comes to the privacy and the security of your app. And number two, the things that you do have control over and that you definitely need to know about. So make sure you stick around until the end. Now, first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding and no technical background required. So when it comes to your no code apps security, specifically on Bubble, these are the things that I want you to know. So first we're gonna talk about this initial segment, we'll call it, the things that you don't really have control over. So what I want you to think about are two ways in which you can build an app. Number one, you could write the app line by line and code it from the ground up. Or number two, you could use a no code development platform. You could use Bubble to build your app. Now, when you're writing an app or when you're coding an app from scratch, there are a lot of potential places where you could make an error, right? Think about writing an entire app from scratch. There's a lot that goes into that. Now, any errors you make can open up possibilities for holes in the security or the privacy in the app. And for a lot of these things, while you can test an app, of course, at the end of the day, a lot of them, they're not going to be uncovered until they actually happen. And so there are only so many things you can anticipate and test for. That's the nature of testing. And so in a lot of cases, these things aren't really uncovered until they just happen. Now, when you're building an app on a no-code platform or on Bubble, for example, I want you to kind of envision the app being split into two levels. And on the bottom half, you have what we'll call the underlying framework of your app. And I want you to think about this as Bubble itself, as the Bubble platform, okay? This makes up the underlying framework of your app. Now you're just building on top of that underlying framework. So the top half, those are the things that you are creating, the different processes within your app, the user-facing side of the app, the things that you are controlling or that you're creating custom for your app. So think about the app as being that bottom and that top layer. Now on the bottom layer, you have that underlying framework. You have the bubble platform. Now this differs from writing, a, uh, writing an application or coding an application from scratch because all of that, or a lot of that at least, is already done for you. That's what makes up the bubble platform. That's what forms that underlying framework of your application. That's already been done for you and you can't touch it. Now, that's a really, really good thing. Some people see this as a negative thing. I can't access my code. That's actually a really good thing. And the reason is because assuming that you are not a professional developer in the traditional sense, you are not a coder. That means that you can't go in and accidentally tweak something or create a gap or a hole in the security. So that's a really good thing. Now, the other big benefit to this is that there are hundreds of thousands of users on the Bubble platform and they're creating apps every single day. And all of those apps are built on top of the same platform or on top of that same underlying framework. Now, when that happens, Bubble or whatever no-code platform you wanna talk about, they're able to test that framework again and again and again and again and again, thousands and thousands and thousands of times over. 
that is really, really good. Again, compare that to coding your app from scratch. There's a big difference here and you can use that to your advantage. And that's how I want you to look at it too, because it's, it's easy to just come into this and think, well, I don't have access to my code. Is it really secure? Think about how many apps have been built on the platform and think about how many opportunities that has given Bubble over the years to create an even stronger and more so secure and more robust platform for you. So that's kind of the first segment that I want to talk about. So those are the things that you can't really touch or control but that you still need to know about. Right? Now, the second segment that I want to talk about is that, that top half of the application. So remember, we, we kind of visually divided the app into two. We have the underlying framework. Now we have the top half. And I want you to look at this as being made up of the different processes that you are creating for your application. So the processes that your users will go through, the ways they register for your app, the ways they log in, uh, the ways they navigate the app, the ways they are able to access or manipulate data in your application. Right? Now, this makes up that top half. Now, these are the things that you can control and that you really need to know about because these are the things that are up to you. So when it comes to privacy or security related to how users interact with your application, that's up to you. Now with Bubble specifically, you have the capability to create privacy within your app. You can create what are called user roles. So you can make sure that only specific users have access to specific data, for example, and that other users don't. You can create different processes within your app. Maybe you want to create more secure logins for your app. Well, you can do that, but it's up to you. Now, this is why it's really important that you understand this part. It's up to you. So you have to build those things in. So while that underlying bubble framework is inherently secure because of the nature of the platform, because of everything we talked about, Everything that you build is not inherently secure because it's up to you to build it. So you have to make sure that you build it in the right way. You have to make sure that you build it with that security, with that privacy in mind. That's up to you. So you control that. So it's really important that you understand that. Now I wanna take it a step further. Some applications, naturally need to be more secure than others, depending on your target market, the type of data you're dealing with, your users, your industry, and all of that. Some apps are just going to need to be more secure. So what happens if you have to comply with certain regulations or you have to implement extra security measures, for example? Well, this, this kind of depends. Now, first, it's important you understand those two initial sort of segments that we talked about. But when it comes to compliance in any way, number one, you wanna make sure that you do your homework and you do your research. For example, bu Bubble is not PCI compliant or HIPAA compliant. And this has to do with different laws related to how you handle and store sensitive data or sensitive information. So if you need to build an app that complies with certain regulations uh, in your industry, you need to make sure that you do the proper research ahead of time. Now, this might involve needing to find an external database, for example, where you can store your data in a compliant way based on the standards that you need to meet. And you can connect that to your bubble app via an API. So again, you might just need to do your own homework and research if you need to comply with any laws in your industry or in your country, then I would encourage you to seek out some legal counsel or some professionals in that area who you can talk to. So you can make sure that you're headed down the right path and you can use some of this information that we talked about today 
to help guide you in the right direction or to at least help you understand what you're working with. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want you to know about is if you do have to meet certain standards or certain compliance standards, or if you are building a really niche app for a really niche industry that just needs a lot of really specifics beyond the average app on Bubble. Well, one of the reasons why we really love this platform is because it is so powerful and you can build so much on it. So for example, if you are building this type of, of an app, well, you can talk to Bubble, you can communicate with Bubble about their dedicated plans, for example. So maybe if one of the basic plans doesn't suit your needs for your specific type of app, well, maybe one of their dedicated plans will, where you can have access to different types of security measures, privacy measures, for example. Now, most apps won't need this. So most people won't even need to think about this. But if you do, I want you to at least have the information so you can get headed in the right direction. So we have our underlying framework, the things that you can't really touch, but that you do really benefit from. We have what's built on top of that. These are the, these are the things that you control and that you need to know how to put into place correctly. And you need to make sure that you know ahead of time what you want your processes to look like if they do need to be more secure. What steps do users need to go through when they are logging in, for example, or when they're in your app? You need to have those outlined so that you can then go in and create the structure to support that. And then number three, if you're taking it a step further and you do need to meet certain compliance standards or regulations, know that there are options for you. So you can look into third-party databases, for example, or third-party tools that might be compliant to different laws that you're dealing with. You'll wanna work with uh, experts within that area because of course we are not uh, legal experts, so we can't guide you on that, um, but we can at least give you the information you need in order to then go off and do your own homework. You can look at dedicated plans. And remember, most people don't ever have to think about this, but if you do, it's there. And that's a really massive benefit for you. So I hope that's helpful for you. This is a conversation that I was having with one of our private clients the other day. And I know that it's a question a lot of you have asked in the past. And so I want to give you the information that you need so you can move forward correctly based on your own needs and your own app and your own target market and all of that. Now, if you are, are just starting out with your app or if you have started building your app and you wanna make sure you're headed in the right direction, we have a free training where we walk you through our process step-by-step. Step. And this is the initial process that we take our own clients through in making sure they're headed in the right direction with their apps, both from a strategic and a technical standpoint. If you want to make sure that you're headed in the right direction with your app, you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and you can sign up for our training there. Again, we'll guide you through some strategy, some technical stuff with your app so you can make sure that you are building up traction early and you're headed in the right direction with it. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. All right. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.